Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Father Al. I'm the pastor of St. Joan of Arc in Hershey. And I just want to let you know that my heart goes out to all of you who have lost uh, your mom, uh, sister, your daughter, your friend, Jen. And just know that we're in, you're in my, our prayers. And all the people of the parish are going to be praying for Jen and for your family this weekend. Okay? So let's just take a moment of silence to realize we're in God's will. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. In the waters of baptism, Jen died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. My brothers and sisters, we have come together to renew our trust in Christ, who by dying on the cross has freed us from eternal death, and by rising has opened for us the gates of heaven. Let us pray for our sister Jen, that she may share in Christ's victory. But let us pray also for ourselves, that the Lord may grant us the gift of his loving consolation. Let us pray. Almighty God and Father, it is our certain faith that your Son, who died on the cross, was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery, your servant Jennifer, who has gone to her rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Let us listen to a reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If there were not, would I have told you that I am going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself so that where I am, you also may be. Where I am going, you know the way. But Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. First, once again, you know, I uh, just want to offer my condolences to Jen's mom and dad and to her sister, to her sisters, but in a special way to uh, Braden and Ian and um, uh, <laughs> uh, it's, it's just that, you know, my condolences go to you. You know, it's so hard when any, when any of our loved ones die. And, you know, and we're filled with great sadness. On the day that I came over to your house, right after that, I ran over, but I anointed and gave the uh, last rites to a woman who was 96 years old. And it's sad when, she, when somebody dies and somebody who's been with us for so long, but it's especially sad when somebody dies who's so young, when someone dies who had so much to look forward to in life. You know, I think most of us recognize by the time we get into our 90s and uh, that it, it's a time for everything, time, a place, time for us to go. And yet the thing we have to remember is that as difficult as this is, Jen is only 51, is the fact is, is that our lives here on this earth are so short to begin with. You know, if you think about it, for us Christians, we believe that we were created forever. We were created for all eternity. And so our lives here on this earth, it's like the snap of a finger, it's like the blink of the eye. And so whether we live to be 30 or 50 or 80 or 100, our lives go by so quickly. And we recognize that for all of us, we're going to have to come to that same end. At some point, the Lord's going to call us from this life to be with him forever. And that's why even when we, we're, we're filled with grief and mourning and there's so, so much sadness over a, a loved one dying, isn't that funny? Jesus says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God and faith in me, and everything will be okay. It, it seems like almost impossible to think that way, 
you know, that everything is going to be okay when we've lost someone who was so filled with life, who was so kind and loving, and yet, ultimately, we have to trust in the words of Jesus. So, I think one of the things that we have to remember is it says, Jesus says to us, and for us Christians, that means that the words of Jesus are trustworthy, is that he says that he will come and take us to be with him forever. And so I think one of the images that whenever a loved one dies, when we think of Jen's death, we have to believe that we're never alone, even when we die. We are never alone. Because it is my belief that at the moment of Jen's death, the Lord Jesus was there to take her by the hand, to forgive all her sins, and to bring her into everlasting life, where she could have true peace, true rest, <laughs> and where she will not be alone, but will be with all of her loved ones who have gone before her, that she will be with uh, Mary and the angels and the saints, and that now she is in a place of rest. You know, in this life, we call this life in many ways a valley of tears. This life is wonderful. It's so beautiful, and there's so many things to be grateful for. As a matter of fact, perhaps one of the most important things for us to do in life is to be grateful. To be grateful for all the gifts that we've been given. To be grateful for the life we've been given. For the people that we've been given in our lives. And to just very simply say, thank you, Lord. Whether my life be short or long, I want to thank you, Lord, because this world is beautiful. But we weren't created for this world alone. We were created for something greater. As a matter of fact, we're told that we were created for glory. We were created to live forever. And ultimately, despite all the uh, sadness and the ups and downs and the joys and sorrows of this life, that ultimately we believe as followers of Jesus Christ that all will be okay. I think that's just such a beautiful thing. And it sounds like such a simple thing is as if that's the, the you know, you put the message of Christianity into, into short words, but everything's going to be okay. Everything is going to be okay. Because ultimately, we'll be with the Lord who loves us, who has created us, who forgives us, and who uh, takes us to himself. But even more importantly, we believe that one day we'll all be together again. Because no one, no one is going to escape death. But we believe Jesus Christ has conquered death, has conquered sin and death, and that he, on that third day after his own death, his horrible death on the cross, he was raised to glory, and that he has a new life that will never end. And he invites us to be part of that life as well. You know, as we come here today, we think about Jen, and we think about uh, the kind of person that she was. Uh, a, a loving person, a kind person, someone who loved to get, to shower gifts on others, who loved her sons, who loved to be with her, her children as they were playing sports, you know, who very simply uh, lived this life uh, loving every moment. We all have difficulties, though, don't we? All of us have difficulties in life. And yet, Christ even uh, conquers those things. So, I think as we come here today, we just have to ask ourselves, we commend Jen to the Lord, and we know the Lord is loving and good and merciful and kind, that she is now with him. But we have to ask ourselves, we're still here. How are we going to live our lives until the Lord calls us home? You know, I say this at every funeral, and people are at the parish are probably getting tired of it. But when we meet the Lord face to face, he's not going to say, how many cars did you have? Or how much money did you have in the day? Or how many houses? Or how famous were you, or how popular were you? But he's going to ask us of his, did you love the people I put into your life? Did you know how to be faithful to the people you said you were going to be faithful to? Did you know how to forgive and ask forgiveness? Did you know how to uh, be kind and generous and loving? Ultimately, I think the difference between heaven and hell is simply did I live my life only for myself, or did I live my life for others? Ultimately, this life is about serving God and serving one another, especially serving uh, the people God places in our lives. You know, it's wonderful to love the people.
people in China and Africa and South America. But if we don't love the people we live with, if we don't aren't faithful to them, if we don't know how to forgive and ask forgiveness, then I think in many ways we have it all mixed up. We have it all messed up. So brothers and sisters, we commend and we come here and we're saddened, but we're also men and women of faith. And we believe that Jen is finally at peace. But we continue. We continue in this world. So let us simply take a moment to give thanks to God for all the blessings of Jen in this world. But also, let us pray that we will live good and holy lives. Lives not just for ourselves, but lives for others. So that one day we'll see Jen again. That at the moment of death when the Lord takes us by the hand. You know, whether we're surrounded by family or friends, or whether we're alone, the Lord Jesus is there. He takes us by the hand, and he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Now come and be with me forever. That's really at the heart of what it means to be a Christian. This is what is our belief, that the Lord is good and merciful and loving, and that one day we'll be with him, and perhaps just as important, we'll all be there together again. This, to me, is uh, my greatest hope. And this is what I truly believe with all my heart. And I hope and pray that you believe that too. God, the Almighty Father, raised Christ, his Son, from the dead. With confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and dead. And our response to these intercessions will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For Jen, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our sister, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that she may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their good. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have fallen asleep in the hope of, a ri of, of rising again, that they may see God face to face. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the family and friends of our sister Jen, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us just take a moment of silence and call to mind our almost personal needs in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters. Cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bringing all of our prayers together into one, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Before we go our separate ways, we take leave of our sister Jen. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet Jen again, when the love of God, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Into your, hand, Father, into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Jen, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Jen in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. 
Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant, and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith, until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need, and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace, and may her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.